live local derby action on the Sunday match this afternoon. We're at the Valley as Charlton meet Crystal Palace yet again. Already this month, the two clubs have met in the Anglo-Italian Cup. Charlton won that tie by four goals to one. And this week at Selhurst Park, Palace came out on top in the second round first leg of the Coca-Cola Cup. Now, they meet again. Good afternoon. Some interesting questions to be answered today. Can Charlton end Palace's five-game winning streak? Will John Solarco make an appearance? And if he does, can he reproduce the form that won him England caps before his terrible run of injuries? It's an intriguing afternoon, Saint. Did you know this is the first live televised game from the Valley since 1947? I don't think they had television cameras in 1947. Pathé play, News, you? wasn't it? It was all <laughs> Pathé like News there in 1947. Well, that's a nice one. And the, we'll get the answers to those questions you'll be posing a little bit later in the programme. We can join our reporter Jim Rosenthal at the Valley right now for all the latest, including a special presentation, I believe, Jim. Thank you, Matt, and uh, welcome to the Valley. You're seeing uh, Julia Somerville, the ITN newsreader, and Steve Grit, the manager here at Charlton. 20,000 pounds the check and about a year ago Steve's daughter Haley Steve's daughter Haley was uh, was very ill and there she is with seven-year-old James she needed a, an operation at the Great Ormond Street Hospital Charlton and Millwall played a game in the summer and they raised 20,000 pounds on behalf of the British Brain and Spine <laughs> Foundation well, let's just move in and, uh, and have a word with Julia. Julia, nice to see you at a football match. A bit of an uh, unusual spot for you, perhaps. Just explain to us uh, why you're accepting the cheque here. Well, I was asked if I would um, help launch the British Brain and Spine Foundation because of my own history. I, as you probably know, I had a brain tumour last year and a successful operation for it. And uh, I'm delighted to be associated with such a good cause. And I think this might show uh, the caring side of the game, really, because you have to read out one or two fairly unsavoury things about football in your job, don't you? Well, I think everybody knows that these are not typical stories, really, about football. And obviously, you're right, this shows the whole game in a very positive light. And the amount of money that Charlton has managed to raise for the British Brain and Spine Foundation is fantastic. Let's just have a word w with Steve. Um, Steve, your reaction, really, to, to what you've had to do here this afternoon? Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, we started last year, um, obviously, with my daughter having the operation last year. Uh, I wanted to do something. Uh, thankfully, Peter Viney came along, and uh, with the match that we uh, we had in May, uh, we were hope that also helped to raise uh, the amount we've just given to the foundation today. Mm. And Haley, you're you're 100% now. You went back to school and everything, and you're absolutely fine. Yes. And what are your feelings about about today? Because it's a big moment for you as well. Yes. Good. Smashing. Okay, let's have a last word with Julia. Um, Julia, your football affiliations, where do they lie? Well, I hesitate to say so in these current circumstances, but if, if I tell you that I'm the mother of a junior gunner, <laughs> I think you'll know that I have been known to go to Highbury. But um, my heart is obviously with Charlton today. Okay. I think I should say this. <laughs> well, it's lovely to see you here today. Let's let's just uh, thanks a lot, Julia. Let's just talk a bit of football. What about the, the game ahead of us now? I mean, you've been a little bit inconsistent this season, haven't you? But here at the Valley, you've been playing pretty well. Yeah, so far we're unbeaten at the Valley. Uh, we've had some very good games here. We've beaten some good sides. It's going to be a difficult game again. Uh, it's been the third time we've met we've met Crystal Palace uh, over the last month, and uh, hopefully we'll now go two one up in the series. Let's hope so. Thanks to all four of you for joining us. Smashing. Thank you very much indeed. OK, a bit of team news uh, from here for you, Matt, that uh, Carl Lieben, who's having a really good season for Charlton, he's uh, not playing here today, just a failed a fitness test. Crystal Palace were stuck in a bit of traffic getting here. They, they only arrived around about 20 or 25 minutes ago, but Alan Smith says that's part of their policy of not getting here too early. John Solarco is on the bench for them. And one statistic that they hate being reminded of uh, here at the Valley, Charlton have never won live on ITV on a Sunday. They'll try and change that today. All the daylight between Crystal Palace and Charlton, the top two in Division 1 on Tuesday. But the leaders were the form team, and it showed, even if Darren Pitcher's miss kick was harshly interpreted as a back pass, it gave Dean Gordon a controversial chance to put Palace ahead. It was too early in the second half from another well-struck shot from arguably Division 1's top midfielder so far this season, Gareth Southgate. The only worthwhile memory of the night for Charlton was a nicely taken goal from Carl Lieben, full of tenacity in the first place as he shrugged off Eric Young 
and then a nice delicate touch to round it off. But 2-1 would have flattered Charlton. John Salaka returned for Palace after 11 months out injured. That inspired them to keep coming forward and David White in for the suspended Chris Armstrong got them a third. Charlton know they'll need to do much better this afternoon. Well, four marks to Palace, but uh, in yes. the other event, the Anglo-Italian Cup a few weeks back, Charlton won. Went the other way. Yeah. <laughs> That's why today, as I was saying before on uh, down at the Valley, that this is going to be the decider of, of the three before the other leg comes up. So, I mean, it's, it's a good time for somebody to, to really impose himself this afternoon. This is the, uh, the Anglo-Italian here. Um, Stuart Banner getting a goal that, uh, well, let's face it, Matthew, you could have got that one yourself, couldn't you? Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice and neat. <laughs> Colin Walsh getting one coming up here. Now, this is a collector item because uh, Colin as we know has got a terrific left foot but he knocks this in with his right so that put them two up I couldn't have got that one Sam no I don't think that might just have been outside of each uh, Paul Williams the shot come, this is a Bowery shot comes off the post and there's Paul predatory player always looking for anything coming off goalkeepers post whatever good luck player so that made it 3-1 uh, oh, and then, then we're descending off here a little bit of naughty going in the corner there and Chris Armstrong sent off. Now that's a pity as far as today's game is concerned because I'm looking forward always to seeing Chris Armstrong. Uh, the pity is, of course, that uh, he gets a suspension, will not play. Well, neither with this bloke. This is Peter Garland and uh, he's missing because that's of another right. That's defense. right. He was sent off against Millwall. Uh -huh. So uh, he misses it. Will there be any players left, I ask? <laughs> <laughs> Lebon won't play today. Oh, not this is a, Yeah, this is a Lebon goal. But I think he's like, injured, actually, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's injured, yeah. He's injured. But that, that is a pity because, you know, Lee Burn now, leading goal scorer for them, and you've got uh, Armstrong out as well, leading goal scorer for Palace. But we seem to have had an awful lot from them, and the season's only a, a couple of months <laughs> yeah. old, isn't it? They may be fed up playing each other shortly. Well, if you'll look at the table, uh, you'll see there, whoever wins goes top. Uh, Palace, if they get a point, will go level with Tramia. But... Uh, yeah, may have better uh, goal difference, but uh, Charlton certainly uh, need to win this one today to go top. Undefeated at the Valley, so that's pretty good. That, uh, How do you see it, Sam? Well, I, it's a very tight one to call this. I wouldn't like to say, you know, who was favourite in this one. Now, I like to look at Palace when, when we had them in the match a couple of weeks back, played lovely football. I think Armstrong missing, you know, might just be the thing that sends it the other way. Although Big David White looked a player. Uh, the little glimpses we've seen of him, so, you know, he might come in and do some damage this afternoon. All a bit tight, but I think you maybe, in this one, lean towards the home team, although, as I was saying, they've never won when they've been on television. That's uh, an awful record, but we've also seen some awful moments uh, in the, the first 20 minutes of this programme. Are you looking for an open and a fair game this afternoon? We're always looking for that. We're looking for open football. Charlton are always trying to play football, and I've been impressed this year when, when I saw the Palace because they played a nice passing game. They've got away from humping the ball up the park, played a nice passing game. So I, I think this afternoon we should see the ball on the ground and players knocking it around. I think that's something that uh, this game will throw up for us. On paper, it's the best game we've had so far, first against second or whatever. Well, it, it's a nice juicy London derby, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and just coming off having played each other this already this season, you know, uh, a couple of times, and it's won all in the series. Yes, the whole thing is building up nicely for, for this one today. Now, we can't talk too much about what happens in the rest of the season because it's only just started, sure. this one. But I did call them first against second. They're not. They were last week. I mean, do you see a promotion candidate amongst the two teams we've got today? Well, I think if you, even at the start of a season, the teams that got off to a flyer are usually in the fight right the way through. And, and I can see that. Charlton last year started well and then, and then tailed because they don't have a big squad of players. They've got a small squad of players. But yes, I, I can see these two being in the shake-up at the end. Great, we hope so. It should be a good old match. Time now to join our commentators for the next 90 minutes. Theo Foley's on the team again. He's a man who knows a bit about Charlton. But first, it's good afternoon to Brian Moore. Good afternoon, Matthew, Saints, and everybody. Tell you what, we've got a really dirty afternoon here. In the last 20 minutes or so, what about that? <laughs> it's just like Fulham the other night, in fact, when it absolutely threw it down in their Coca-Cola cut tie against Liverpool. What, the team's coming out now? And as the Saint and Matthew were saying, the winners here today, in a way, take all. Go to the top of the first division of the Ensley League. 
My first job as ever, of course, is to bring you up to date with the team news. It's teams then, Charlton with their squad numbers. Number 19, Mike Salmon. Number one, Stuart Barmer. And uh, to 16, Darren Pitcher. Let me get it that way. 11, Scott Minto. 15, Alan Pardew. 23 is Phil Chappell. 10, Alan McCleary. 18, John Robinson. Number one, Stuart Barmer. 6, Kim Grant. 12, Gary Nelson. And 21, Colin Walsh. Well, McLeary and Chapel, the central defenders. Robinson wide on the right and Walsh on the left. Pardew, a former Crystal Palace favourite, of course, himself in the midfield with pitcher. Peter Garland suspended. Grant and Nelson, the two, are in attack. And uh, Andy Thorne comes back to the Crystal Palace side today. Strong man in defence. He's missed some six games. He pulled a hamstring against Nottingham Forest. They'll be glad to see him back. Let's check on the uh, Crystal Palace team. Uh, conventional numbering here, thank goodness. Nigel Martin in goal. Uh, two, John Humphrey, former Charlton man. Three is Chris Coleman. Four, Gareth Southgate. Five, Eric Young. Six, Andy Thorne. Seven, Richard Shaw. Eight, Bobby Bowery. Nine, David White. Ten, Paul Williams. Another Charlton man, of course, formerly. And eleven, Simon Roger. Thorne returns to centre defence then. Southgate, a big influence in the midfield. Where Shaw, formerly a fullback, is settling well in that position. Up front, no Chris Armstrong suspended. But uh, as we were saying earlier, David White capable of scoring really spectacular goals. He substitutes for this game at the Valley this afternoon. Sean Newton, Paul Gorman, and goalkeeper John Vaughan for Charlton. And for Crystal Palace, John Salako, uh, goalkeeper Andy Woodman, and Dean Gordon. Referee Martin Bodenham from Lou in Cornwall. Mention of John Salako just a moment ago came on as a sub on Tuesday night in the Coca Cola. He's just signed a, a two and a half year contract this week. That's good news for Palace fans, and what is also very good news is after that game on Tuesday night, he went to see a surgeon and gave him a complete OK after the terrible troubles he's had with a knee injury over the last couple of years. So that's good news for John and for Palace. And it should, uh, it's an excellent pitch here, I must say, at the Valley. And with this bit of rain on it, my goodness, this game is going to move up and down the pitch a bit. Palace in the white shirts, attacking the goal to our right. Charlton unbeaten at the Valley this season, with Minto. Young gets in for Crystal Palace. Theo Foley, co-commentator, prospects very good, eh? Yes, I, I think it's going to be very interesting, Brian, and very, very tight early on, because obviously Palace will be cock a hoop after the night. Chant, I think, but the little lad pitcher now gone into midfield. You know, they give them a lot of strength in there against Shaw. It's going to be a very hard game, I think. Young getting it back to uh, Nigel Martin. Hit long towards David White. White beaten in the air, though, by McCleary. Chasing that one into touch. Minto with the throw for Charlton. All ticket crowd, 8,600. Here's White for Palace. Williams putting it straight at Chapel though. Walsh gets it away up towards Kim Grant. Coleman though for Palace. Charlton got off to such a Tremendous start here in the Anglo-Italian, as you saw on the programme a little earlier when Stuart Barmer scored in the first minute. And went on to win 4-1. Charlton, just to remind you though, were beaten 3-1 in the Coca-Cola at Selhurst Park on Tuesday night. And Alan Kerbishley, one of their joint managers, really hitting out in the... Uh, program today saying that it was a totally unacceptable performance outplayed in every department he said and they certainly need to call upon more determination and competitiveness here this afternoon 
Roger, nice little touch by here. Humphrey. To Williams. Or rather to Barry. Forward to, then to Williams. Here's White. And a corner to Crystal Palace. Thorne uh -huh. Coleman going forward. Young taking his time to get there. They've actually started very well, Palace. They're very, very confident. Probably coming off the back of that one the other night. Simon Roger with the corner for Palace. Young's made a little run towards it. Flicked on by Thorne. And fisted away in the end by Salmon under too much pressure, in fact, from Gareth Southgate. So it's a free kick. Mike Salmon, the uh, Charlton goalkeeper. Lancashire lad, formerly with Blackburn and Stockport, Bolton and Wrexham. And put under a lot of pressure here with this corner. Coleman's header. Fisted away, but Southgate's assault was too much for the referee. Grant. It's a back to pitcher. Thorne playing it forward. Minto. There's Shaw in quickly. Minto... Not to be denied, though. Humphrey getting it forward. Chapel, formerly with Cambridge United, getting it away for Charlton. Up to Walsh. Chased here by Grant. I would think even at this early stage, Brian, the Charlton will miss Leibon from the set plays defending as well as attacking. Because he, he is so powerful in there. And they'll also have to change the way that they're playing. With, he holds uh, the line up so well, doesn't he? He holds the ball up so well, uh, Leibon. He certainly does. Here's Chapel. Oh, and a long way allowed to go a long way there. Just needed a touch from somebody. Martin in the end behind it for Palace. I think the boy Padre was in there and he didn't realise it. Southgate let him run. Sure. To Bobby Bowery on this right hand side. Williams getting it back to Shaw again. Played in by Southgate, but cut out by Minto for Charlton. Lobbed forward there. Southgate retrieving it, though. Darren Pitcher taking it up for Charlton. Robinson on the far side. I think we also have to say that, that Palace will, will miss uh, Armstrong, who stupidly was sent off in that game. There's no doubt about that. It seems to even itself up now. Yes, so we people... both saw that game, didn't yep. we? I mean, there was a player looking to be sent off, and he's he's not at all like that. In fact, it's off the field or on it normally, but he was going around like a, a raging bull for about ten minutes. It must have been a bad night from Brian. He must have wanted to play. Thorn beaten in the air that time by Grant Nelson, challenging Young, but Young getting the better of him. Nelson's missed a couple of games. Just a suggestion, maybe, that he's not 100% fit, Gary Nelson. Good little to play there by Minto. Here's Darren Pitcher for them. And now Kim Grant. Celebrated his 21st birthday yesterday, Kim Grant. Boy from Ghana. That's the other thing I have to contend with. Now, the rain has stopped, Brian. And, of course, the pitch is going to be very, very slippy. Humphrey with the throw for Palace. It's a good ball played there by White for Roger. Roger crossing it in and down goes Saron. A collision there between the, oh, the goalkeeper and the defender. And it fell for Gareth Southgate who for a moment looked as though he had a gaping goal to aim for. But it was cut out and uh, Charlton get a throw on the far side. Yes, Alan McLeary did poorly here, Brian. He let the boy White come off. That's how all the trouble started. The goalkeeper came a little bit late for me and didn't really be positive in his, in his selection. Really didn't. A little bit unlucky, obviously, hit the, hit the Charlton player coming in. Cross coming in. Humphrey getting it away without great conviction, but uh, Simon Roger helping, and then Gareth Southgate. Pitcher. Robinson. Pitcher. Into Grant. Pitcher again. 
big defender, and it's gone. That's just a nice bit of foot, football from Charlton because uh, early on, as I said, I felt Palace had started better. But a few good passes, a few little bit of movements, and everybody's confidence starts to come back. You've obviously seen him play before, but let him have a long range shot, went nowhere. Up goes Chapel. Thorne taking no chances. They're very experienced at the back there, Thorne and Young, obviously. Both know the ropes. Robinson with the cross. Yes, he's changed a winning side on Smith, hasn't he? Uh, Chris Coleman had been playing centre defence, but Thorne now back and fit again. Decided his experience was invaluable, so uh, Coleman moves to left back, and Dean Gordon is one of the subs. Good jump there by Thorne. Up to White. Bowery. Super Bowl there. Roger. Making good progress, and uh, Coleman has gone streaming on ahead of him. Pitcher picking it out of that midfield area, knocking a good ball forward now for Grant. Played back to Robinson. Trying to persuade Nelson forward. A good ball for him to gather, and there Young puts it on the roof of the stand on the far side. There's certainly no sparring, Brian. Both teams are going all out to win, and uh, as I said with uh, Thorne, I do feel he does give them that little bit of calmness at the back that Eric Young badly needs as well. But the football has been excellent from both teams. Let's hope it's continued. And the reward is a, reward is a big one. The winners, remember, go to the top of the first division of the Ensley League. in again form gets there already shown his value in the air for Charlton at the back this afternoon stand up young A stand up Grant in goes Humphrey Grant not too long there Young playing it ooh, a little too short there and a throw for Crystal Palace we're both hesitant people there one afraid to take one on and one afraid to pass the ball Another throw to Palace. For Charlton, rather, Minto with it. Oh, that rain is gone, Brian. So your wishes, yeah. uh, you did, you got wet at Fulham, you won't get wet here. <laughs> it's lovely. Long towards Williams. Bobby Bowery picks this up though for Crystal Palace. Walsh gets it away to Nelson. Grant is up there with him. Now can Nelson get it across? He hammers in a good cross there towards. Oh my goodness, well that was so close to a Chris Coleman own goal. What on earth was he thinking about? I think Alan Smith's hard certainly went up and down there. He actually should have headed it the other way, Brian. As you'll see, he headed it back towards his own goal. It's quite remarkable, that. Would have been a lovely goal. Well, it provides Charlton <laughs> with a corner. That's without Carl Liebman in there to threaten him. <laughs> Alan McCleary out from the back. Ball coming in there. Chapel's up there too. And a goal Just a little bit of bother there with Nigel Martin and, and Gary Nelson trying to stop him making a run out and he's just elected to give him a little reminder on the back of the head. I don't think the referee saw it either. It's what we call professors and Brian, just to annoy him a little bit. Well, there's uh, Simon Webster, I think, at the other end of that body there. Former Charlton player, signed for West Ham, of course, in the close season, a centre-back, and then had a training accident with Julian Dix. Poor old Simon, which is he's going to be out for most of this season. We, we wish, wish him well. well. Yes, we do indeed.
terrific character and that would have been a wonderful move for him. Well, it is a wonderful move, but it would have been great for him to got into the uh, Premiership with West Ham this season, wouldn't it? That's the second time he broke his leg. You don't often get that. Broken as a young boy. Minto gets it back. It has started very frantic and now it's going to ease down a little bit. I think then they're going to find out who or where they're going to go, they're going to come from, Brian. Thorne getting there above Kim Grant. Grant gets it back to Barman, played forward, it was a break from midfield by Pardew. Coleman hitting it long. And Salmon coming a long way out. saying just over 8,000 people here today but uh, behind where we are sitting the big old terrace is just a, a building site at the moment and the new stand will be here I'm told by Easter with 6,000 seats in it bringing the capacity up to just about 15,000 for Charlton and I would think it will make it a lovely stadium you can see behind us there that's the little tower where Theo and I are sitting with some policemen and where all the action is taking place during the week. Grant did well there, found Nelson, Minto plays it in, Young does well for Palace. Nelson. Calling Walsh towards him. Minto knocking it forward. And a goal kick. The problem is, uh, Theo, when the sides play each other as regularly as these have now, Anglo-Italian, Coca-Cola, now the league, and then a Coca-Cola, you're always fearing you're closer and closer to a stalemate. We've had two good, very, very good games so far. The obvious answer is don't play the Anglo-Italian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Charlton have got one or two uh, very pleasant trips to Italy coming up, I think. Coleman gets this away. Well, they learn so much about each other, and uh, yes. there's an awful lot of cancelling out, isn't there? In that little incident down there, Brian, where Charlton played quite a lot of football, the out ball for them is, is into Leeborn, and of yes. course he's not playing, and uh, unfortunately that's what Minto and, and Walsh were trying to, to look for. The lad, hour gone, no score. The lad Grant looks a little bit, uh, that he's not positive enough to me at the moment. Goes Balmer. Coleman for Palace. I just hope they actually keep the pace up. I mean, what happens is teams tend to get a little bit afraid who's going to make the mistake, you know? And I just hope that they keep it open as they have done. It's been smashing early on. Only about, what, 15 minutes gone. Very strong, those two in the air, aren't they? Thorne and, and Young. Robinson trying to get away, the line's been flagging on the far side. It'll be a free kick to uh, Charlton. John Robinson, who came here from Brighton. It wasn't easy for him either, taking over from Robert Lee, who was such a favourite uh, at Charlton, but he's, uh, he's done very well, particularly this season. Walsh carrying it in. And there was a foul on the keeper. I always, find that, amazing. I always find that amazing, Brian. I mean, I think the keeper comes and the, the, the fella challenges for the ball in the air. I, I'm sure he's not playing the goalkeeper, and yet the goalkeeper gets away with it for me. Bad decision. Coleman knocking it on. White playing it short. Pitcher picking it up for Charlton. into pitcher, Robinson's gone forward, Coleman's right back there with him for Crystal Palace, and it's goal. At the moment, both defences look very, very strong, don't they? Very composed. Alan McCleary done a very good organising job there, I think, for Charlton. Not bad on a free. From Millwall. Correct. Harry 
he goes for that one and gets successfully a header above David White. But here's White. Coleman hits another long ball. Williams looked for a moment as though he may have been offside, but the, the linesman is right in line and the flag stayed down. A missed kick by Walsh. Humphrey can uh, pump this one back into the middle again. McClear is there with a header for Charlton, the Charlton captain. Humphrey. Barry. Flag up this time for an offside against... Uh, number 10, Paul Williams. He did, that was a very good run, Brian, or he was offside. It looked to me like he made a good run behind Alan, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, from where I am here, it looked as if he might just have made a very, very good run. The poor throw out from the lad Salmon, and Walsh wasn't really alive to it. So both of them take the blame. Pardew. Walsh. Standing between uh, Walsh and Minto, and here's Humphrey playing the ball in for White. No foul. Walsh again. Favoured left foot of his, and again. To Falls. It's again for Williams. Now for Roger on the far side. When they actually get it going, Christian Palace, they do get wide players out wide and get the ball to them and of course it's very flowing then uh, but Charlton as I said have looked very composed at the back up to now probably compensating for the, the loss of Armstrong's pace Coleman with the throw coming towards the 20 minute mark Chris Coleman Simon Roger crossed by him into the arms of Salmon contact with me. And it's Williams now. Roger. Minto getting it away. Southgate. Young player of terrific promise through that midfield for Crystal Palace. Good jump though by Darren Pitcher. Very strong Everybody. player. Darren Pitcher. Very, very strong. Here's Humphrey. Barry. Long cross in towards Williams. This one, but Barmer had too much for him. And the shot by uh, Richard Shaw going wide for the goal kick. I think it's going to be hard to score goals in this particular game, Brian, because I think both of the teams, as I said, have both suffered losses, and uh, the defences are well aware of that. And consequently, going to have to work hard to score, I think. Having said that, sometimes probably get two or three now. Pinto's <laughs> throw. Young away. Let's get a touchline view from Jim uh, Rosenthal. 
Thanks, Brian. I had a word with Steve Grit. He's particularly pleased by the passion that Charlton Athletic are showing here today. He felt that was a bit lacking in the Coca-Cola Cup defeat by Palace in the week. He wants them, well, like all managers, he wants to see the ball in the penalty area a little bit more often, but uh, a lot of optimism and uh, a fair bit of joy from the Charlton bench at the moment. But he accepts the first ten minutes was absolutely frantic. <laughs> Certainly has calmed down a bit now, that's for sure. Martin, the big Cornishman, from the same county as the referee. Ball with the header. Nelson. Robinson, foul by Thorne on Nelson. And Martin Bowden wanting a word with the uh, Crystal Palace defender. with the kick Chapel's gone right forward for this one but Eric Young shows himself gets the good header in for Crystal Palace and a Palace throw just over halfway through the first half now Barmer with that throw for Charlton McLeary Chapel playing it for Minto. Here's Walsh. That's a good ball played by Walsh and played with his right boot as well. Minto with a good left foot. Nelson was just waiting to have a swing at that one, but it was Thorne who got it away, and it was an important interception there for Crystal Palace. Here's Humphrey now for Palace. In goes Walsh again. In goes Pitcher. Strong in the midfield, as Theo Thorny was saying. Robinson on the far side, gets it back to Palmer. Charlton now trying to play it around a bit. Alan Pardew, the little chip forward. Nelson's there to receive it. Onto the left foot with the cross. Grant can't get the header in because Thorne got there before him. Minto trying to keep this thing going now. Pitcher, and suddenly free, can break away for Crystal Palace. It's Paul Williams. second go at it as well cross coming in there white didn't get onto it and in the end it was Barner who got it away as southgate closed in on him he did very well there paul williams i'm amazed that they actually blew him here because uh, he's done so well uh, you know for for charlton and of course with his move he's gone good luck to him uh, the actual cross was very very good I think the biggest problem for me, boy, now is that neither team is getting enough players up to actually force the issue, you know? They're both very, very conscious of uh, not making a mistake. In, in these type of games, you're always remembered for making a mistake. And possibly that's the reason that Steve and Alan are so pleased with the commitment. But it is different than the Coca-Cola Cup. It is the league. Right. Coleman with the cross. That actually proves my point. There was only one one player actually in the box there. Williams with a lad outside here. He just decided not to go in at all. Barry. Walsh. Okay, that right foot coming into play. Trying to release Kim Grant here. It's being pursued by a big Eric Young. Again, Minto, Pitcher, Balmer. Play there by Balmer. Now can Robinson find a cross? This is promising for Charlton. The cross might be a little too deep, and Humphrey can put it behind for the corner. That's really Charlton's best chance, Brian, isn't it? To keep playing the ball, keep passing the ball, and waiting for people to get forward. That was lovely. It came from left to right. Cross was poor, I felt. and McCleary on the goal line. Pardew lurking. Grant is deep. Chapel's right in there, the big central defender. And in the end, there was a foul on the keeper. I, I feel it's Gary Nelson. I, I think he's actually trying to stop Nigel coming with the ball. 
He's a big, powerful, strong man. No, he's a big, powerful, strong boy. I don't think anybody get in his way. England player. First million pound goalkeeper when he signed in November 89 for Palace. Roger gives such balance to that side of the field. And Williams didn't get on the end of that. In fact, uh, Charlton are claiming Minto in particular. There was a push on the defender. Scott Minto with the throw. Came off Gary Nelson, so it's going to be a palace throw. Can't see what the dispute was about that. They're <laughs> arguing the toss about it, but Gary Young is slightly darker than Gary Nelson, I can assure you. <laughs> Pitcher getting it away. You're quite right. He's uh, very valuable through that midfield for Charlton this afternoon. He's having a splendid game, Darren Pitcher. Barmer gets it back. Cardew plays it. Well, that's one of the dangers of overplaying. He actually, he actually did selection was, was very Robinson. poor, Robinson. His actual selection, Brian, was poor because the ball had to go forward and not back. And by, by delivering it back, everybody's momentum had stopped. Coleman with the uh, throw. Coleman's header. And again. And now uh, it's a Charlton throw. Still nil-nil. Coming towards the half hour mark. Robinson's back heel. Barmer with the cross. A little back heel again by Colin Walsh. Here's Grant. Minto. Cut out by Humphrey. They're actually playing in very nice triangles down here, Minto and Walsh and, and even Grant when he links up. But the next ball isn't telling enough, and that's, as I said, repeating myself here, that's exactly where they miss Leibon, you know? They need that ball knocked in for Leibon to uh, deliver the goods. And Charlton really will have to find a way around that to score, Brian. Or possibly from a set play. Chapel. Young's header. Now Bobby Bowery, a lad who uh, looked to try and make something of a football future, I think, at one or two London clubs. But uh, couldn't make an impression there, and here he is. He's now very much a part of Crystal Palace's midfield. Still only 22 years old, Croydon boy. It's a very young team now, I would think. A lot of these have been together for a long time. I can remember them as youth players, some of these. Walsh, Tip the outside of the boot there for Minto. Barry just sticks a boot in, but Walsh gets it across, and it's gone a long way, and it came off Young, and it fell for Martin. Surely there's got to be a back pass there. Or was it a back pass? Because Palace got a goal like that the other night. I mean, that's amazing. Exactly. So inconsistent, yeah. that. But that really wasn't a back high. pass. That kept, that Young didn't so. intend that. <laughs> and, and the referee was right, just as he was hopelessly wrong on uh, on Tuesday night in that Coca-Cola game when uh, I think it was Darren Pitcher was alleged to have back passed. And uh, Mr. Morton, the referee, as Steve Gritt said to me, if he could make a packed pass like that, he said he'd be performing in a circus. I mean, it was, it was so ludicrous. It was unbelievable, that uh, decision on Tuesday night. Today, I think he was right. Very really good, Brian. That's cleared that point up, because I agree with you. I don't think that was a back pass. Eight yards or seven yards out. Very lucky man, Eric Young. Could have went in. Short that time, Coleman towards uh, Andy Thorne. Akadiri trying to play it wide, but it's well intercepted by Humphrey. But a good header by Minto. And suddenly Walsh can get forward with Grant in the middle. Nelson in the middle as well. Here's Kim Grant. Will he try a shot? He tries a curl and he's just wide. That was lovely. That was nice. Nice bit of inventive play. I like that. He turned and he, he knew what he was trying to do and uh, it was great. Minto did well there, won a very, very good 
The other thing, Brian, is of course with the rain going off the pitch, it tends to become very, very slippy as opposed to when the rain is there all the time. I spoke the too soon, the rain's yeah. coming back again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pitcher again for Charlton. A bit of wrestling over there. Both getting fun of one another. But going back to that back pass business, I know that's something that the Saint has watched very closely this season. You probably know as well. And uh, there's another one for the book for you, Saint. An I've occasion seen. where the referee actually got it right. I've seen Stoke. Stoke have got done twice. Yes, and the same one. He does like things to pick up, though, that Saint. Palmer with the free kick for Charlie. Towards Kim Grant. I thought for a moment he was going to get all the way to him, but I think it was Andy Thorne who again got the header in for Crystal Palace. Humphrey gets it away. Here's Pitcher again. This time it's Walsh. Canny player he has been this down this left flank after a terrific uh, career with Nottingham Forest. Just the sort of winger Cluffy loves. I think he'll get that one though. A John Robertson type in his way, isn't he? Uh, yes, I think the, the biggest tragedy for Colin Walsh was obviously breaking his leg twice. You know, to break it, come back on one and then break it again. You're out for so long, and of course, you lose touch. I think he's been here seven years this month. Into away. Again, Thorne wins it in the air. Min uh, a pitcher that time and then Minto and again the left foot of Colin Walsh gets it clear for Charlton and they are very strong at the heart of that defence and I, I see why Alan uh, Smith has played Thorne because I think he is so powerful and commanding and very very cool under pressure learning all that at Wimbledon of course and uh, following it up Chapel Ooh. Thought for a moment that White might just get on in the end of that one, but uh, it's Balmer getting it clear. Coleman. See, that's a very easy for people to watch to wonder why Charlton throw the ball in the air so much. But the reason is pretty obvious. When you're playing with Carl Eborn, it is necessary to throw the ball in the air where his strength is, and he costs one flick and somebody's through. So it's a little bit difficult for players to remember that he's not playing. That might sound strange, I know. Cleary towards uh, Nelson. It's Richard Shaw. And this time it's uh, a Charlton throw. Let's get another view from uh, Jim Rosenthal. Let's see what Crystal Palace have got to say about it so far. Bit of a contrast on the Palace bench, Brian. Um, Alan Smith a little bit concerned. He says he feels Charlton just that bit brighter, a bit sharper, quicker to the ball. You'll be very aware how Alan Smith has changed Palace's uh, style this season, and he feels in this first half perhaps his team are trying to play just a little bit too much football. He could do with them being rather more direct. Thank you, Jim. After getting it forward. Williams chasing, but and, uh, although it looked as though the Charlton defender may have got a little nudge in the back there, the linesman's overlooked that and uh, has given Crystal Palace the throw. Colin Walsh towards Gary Nelson. Thorne there. Coleman. Certainly, uh, Alan Smith has changed things around at Crystal Palace. The diet has changed a lot, so I'm told. There's an awful lot of pasta goes down these Crystal Palace men these days, and Alan's taking his team off to Portugal immediately after this game. They, in fact, go straight from the valley to Gatwick to catch a flight for about a four or five day break, I think it is, in uh, Portugal. But not sunbathing. They'll be working hard, he says. What a wicked life, eh? <laughs> I think those golf clubs, Brian, will be all right. See if you can get on the trip, mate. Uh, got, a little, got a little date at, uh, at Manchester United on uh, Wednesday night for that. 
against Honved live on ITV. And uh, Alan's wife, Linda, in fact, makes an awful lot of that pasta for, uh, for the Crystal Palace team. In fact, she changed it, I think, from spaghetti to lasagna, he was telling me, when they came here and played in the Anglo-Italian, and the players are blaming her for the change of diet and their defeat. Carries in the back of his Jaguar. I was going to say, that makes a change from uh, playing with the manager, doesn't it? <laughs> Sack the wife. Right, here's Charlton coming in. Again, it was Southgate. I can actually see what he's on about Palace overplaying because I think they miss the pace of Armstrong who will be looking for the ball delivered early into those areas. And it seems strange that we're talking about two players who aren't playing because I think there is a big loss to the game because of that. Well, it's still 0-0 here at the Valley. 37 minutes gone. Humphrey. Walsh. Pitcher there, Bobby Barry. Back comes Pitcher again. Slides it back to Mike Salmon, left footed away by the goalkeeper. Martin. Very strong Eric Young there. I think Gary Nelson is obviously finding it very hard against him. I'd actually swap them over if I was Alan. I'd put Grant on the other one. I think he's much more elusive and the other guy might suit uh, Gary. He's very strong. Got a foul on Grant there and a free kick to Charlton. Andy Thorne being uh, called for a yellow card. Well, I, I'm actually surprised that, that, he's, that he's surprised. That was the second foul. The one before I think the referee let it go. That's his second foul, and quite right, he's saying, I'm going to book you for it. I think, to be fair, that's what the referee said. The referee said, look, that's not the first time. He, 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 two or three uh, fingers were pointed towards Andy Thorne, so he's gone into the book. So, Barmer with a kick. Up goes Eric Young. Paul Williams plays it to Simon Roger. Ooh, that was a ball left by McCleary. Now, what's he going to get for that? I mean, that was. He's actually slipped going in, Brian. He slipped going in, his arm came yeah. up. Yeah. Might I mean, just get a look at that, a yellow card. That's. Oh, I don't know. I, I think that's right. I, I don't think he, was, he actually meant to handle it. I mean, he did in the end, obviously. He realised he slipped. But. Uh, no, I, I don't feel that was that was on. As I said, the old pitch will, will cause a few problems as it goes on too. It's not raining now. Thorne knocking that one in. Good jump by Chapel. Southgate playing it forward again. Wright tried his shots. Robinson trying to bring it away. Humphrey getting it going again for Crystal Palace. Up goes Roger. And he came for David White there. And the whole Charlton side waiting uh, for Coleman actually to collect that clearance. And in the end, Walsh gets it away. So many players could have attacked the ball there and nobody did. Palace could have got in on it. Free kick, feet behind. Walsh playing it to Minto. Grant. Southgate's after him, but he still finds Walsh with it. Walsh finds time to find Minto. Little dummy by him. Change of mind, change of direction. Pitcher, same goes for him. And Thorne turning and looking at the referee, claiming he's being held by Gary Nelson. Minto's cross in towards Kim Grant. Glanced on by him towards Robinson, but Coleman was head and shoulders above him. Corner given. One for Charles. 
Charlton by Gary Nelson. Fancy Charlton a little bit on a set place, uh, Brian. I think they worked very hard at these, and uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they got a bit of joy out of one of these. Well, they'll be taken by Colin Walsh. Chapel's in there. Pardew's in there. It's Chapel with a header who scored on the opening day of the season and hasn't scored since. His first game for Charlton, that was. That wasn't a bad effort, really. Cambridge. Sorry? That, that wasn't a bad effort, really. No. I mean, it's, it's difficult with Eric Young and... Uh, yeah, he actually got above him, but didn't direct it. That's the hard bit. I'm really disappointed with Palace's midfield that neither of them have decided to elect to to uh, join up with the forwards. Shaw and, and the boy Southgate, they both actually sat in and I can see what uh, Alan's doing. He's very, very content that they actually stick like that. But at some stage, they're going to have to take a little gamble. It's against Southgate's nature in particular. He does like to get in there uh, yeah. I mean, that's the front man. That's right. I mean, the lad Shaw is basically a full-back or a centre-back for me. I mean, that's why he's in there. So is Pitcher, to be fair. It's a Charlton throw. Stuart Balmer with it to Kim Grant. Palace fans behind that left hand goal, incensed by that decision. They felt it should have been uh, Crystal Palace ball, certainly not a, a free kick to Charlton, but that's what's been given. is there and Robinson number 18 Walsh knocking it in and a foul by Chapel as he jumped for that one uh, Eric Young slightly involved with Alan Pardew they used to be teammates at Crystal Palace Pardew now being called and Chapel I think being called Eric Young's actually kicked him on the floor, Brian. That's what Padre's getting annoyed about. They're both tangled, and you'll see... You'll you, see you have a look at that, and I'll just see what the referee does then, Theo. What's happening there? All getting up. He's trying, he's, trying, he's, trying, he's, trying to, he's trying to get clear, isn't he? Yeah, he's a little bit unlucky, really, Chapel. He's got tangled up on his feet, and he's uh, got a bit annoyed, and Padre's probably told him what he thought about it. Best that everybody keeps quiet. No yellow cards. No. Nope. Good referee. Barry. And McCleary holds off White at the expense of a corner. Playing time added on at the end of the first half. Both linesmen have signaled to the referee that the 45's up. Martin Bodenham's had a look at his watch. They've got some big men to contend with here. Coleman no. and Young. They're all in the big men. Roger playing it in. A flick back. Knocked away. I think it was Minto, in fact, on the post there, getting it away. As the half-time whistle goes, and it's stalemate here at the Valley. After a frantic opening ten minutes or so, it calmed down a little bit. Very, very competitive, but no goals. Charlton Athletic nil. Crystal Palace nil. Welcome back. Uh, this is what they call a competitive game, Sane. Yes, competitive. Um, both sides, if, if you like at the moment, the, def the defenders on both sides are on top. And it really needs something from, I would think, from midfield players to create for the forwards. You know, And, and there's j that's the thing that's missing at the moment. Mm. You, you can't uh, blame the lads for lack of commitment. They're, everybody's getting stuck in. They're all enjoying it. But uh, you, we need something a little bit special to give us the goal that will, I think, then lead to other goals and open the whole game up. The closest to a goal we got was an own goal. We, we did, but Chris Coleman always scored yeah, with a header. It was a lovely. I mean, you know, we, we've had plenty of crosses come in the box, but really, you know, nothing that's looked very dangerous. But this was a beauty, wasn't it? You know, Coleman got up here to clear his lines, as it were, and fly me. You know, just, that just shaded the post, didn't it? And just going up to his yeah. head there. <laughs> now, Theo was on about... Uh, 
about me having a go at referees and whatever and Muro. I have had to say throughout the season, I've made one or two comments about referees in the back pass. Mm -hmm. Now we had another example uh, this afternoon when Eric Young uh, made contact, because that's all I would say is make contact with the ball. Let's have a look at it now. Eric has played in and there's, I mean, you, no way in the world did he try to pass that ball back with his shin <laughs> because it, it made, well, it hits him in the shin. Mm. There's nobody, no football in the world would try to play the ball with his shin back ah, to the goalkeeper. If we run it back to you in, in slow motion, it looks like a pass back. But when that happens at real speed... But the referee, say, the referee from that angle had a very, very good look at it. And he saw it hit him on the shin. So as I say, the referee understands, give, given Martin Bodman uh, a little bit of credit here, I think he knows a bit about the game. OK. Hello again. Saint, uh, on balance, who do you think is worth the points this afternoon? On the balance, I think Charlton's probably just at the edge in that first half. But uh, I would like to see them getting the ball in from... They've got into wide positions and they've knocked a lot of high stuff in. But, you know, I think that uh, Young and Thorne are handling that OK. I'd like to see them start hitting a few low and, you know, cut backs, you know, real fierce balls coming across. Because I think lobbing them up near, you're only playing into their strengths. This is how it could work. This is Kim Grant. Well, Kim Grant had uh, a little bit of an effort here. Good control. He actually, the defender stood well off him there, so he got himself turned and tried a little bender there past Martin at the far post. Just a shade unlucky with that one. But I would like to see more balls played into feet, mm. either like that from midfield or certainly when they get wide. You know, they've been looking wide and it's all been far post, far post and lobbing up. And I, I don't think somehow that we're going to get a goal like that. I think we'll get one if they change it a little bit and start banging them across because the pace of the ball coming off the pitch is a nightmare for defenders. Forwards, as it happens, don't mind that. You don't mind as a forward you're racing and then the ball comes flying off the turf and, and whips in there. But it's, uh, it's awkward for defenders. Well, that's what you think. We can see what one of the men involved thinks. Yes. Alan Kirbishley is going to join us now. He's with Jim Rosenthal. Alan Kirbishley, uh, do these two teams know a bit too much about each other, do you feel? Well, I think that's a problem that we've played each other so many times recently, but the, di the conditions are quite difficult as well. And we just asked our boys, hopefully, to get a pass in, because we're not going to hide up front, we know that. And really, we're playing into their hands by just knocking it up there. We're hoping to get a pass in this half and move it about a bit quicker. Do you feel you've been missing the, the height and the strength of Lieben? Oh, obviously. I mean, he's been playing exceptionally well for us, and it's obviously to be a problem. But a typically frantic derby. You'd have played in a few like this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a lot better for us than it was on Tuesday. We didn't compete with them, and we've got to carry on competing. Just finally, where's that little spark of inspiration going to oh, come no, from no, to no. unlock this? I think the conditions may determine something. I think, you know, across, across the box hits someone, I don't know. But I think the conditions are quite difficult. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Let's get back to our commentary team then, to Theo Foley and first of all to Brian Moore. Thank you, Jim. Hang on time, just waiting now for the start of the second half. And it will be Charlton who get it underway. Nil nil. 45 minutes left. And not for the first time in the game. Andy Thorne gets in a header. And a clearance for Crystal Palace. Stuart Barber. The full back with the number one on his shirt. How daft can you get? These squad numbers drive me crazy. I don't know about you, uh, Theo. It's, uh, up for offside. it's so ridiculous, isn't it? It really is to see a right back playing with number one on his back. I mean, who, I mean I'm sure. It's that confusing. I'm sure there's a, a perhaps a commercial reason for it, but whatever it is, yeah. I think it's balmy and it's confusing. And, I uh, wish I was in on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is ridiculous. Number one playing right back. It's like school days. Cleary, Kim Grant, comes to White, knocked in there. Coleman hitting it long, this is Salmon's ball surely, and it is. I think one of these teams, Brian, has to take a gamble now, and I, I think it has to be Charlton, really, if they want to win it. Palace, I think, will be quite pleased to see it gone as it is. Chapel. Here's Coleman. Just running a few more shots. Here's Simon Roger. Who can 
nicely there by White. Southgate shot goes wide of the goal. Goal kick. I think that's what the game needs. One or two long-range shots. Perhaps a bounce and a deflection, and that might might get the, the goal that's needed. There is a little bit of fear element in both of them. I think Charles is obviously because they lost so heavily in the Coca-Cola. Palace, of course, are aware that they're aware of a hoop and they had the best of the start. Robinson gets it forward. Coleman gets it away. Up to David White. Had a little spell on loan the season before last. Here at uh, Charlton, the number nine. The boy from Greenwich. Did very well. He only had about eight games, but uh, they were very impressed. And I think if they had any money, they'd probably put an offer in for uh, David, and he might well have been a Charlton player today. He also had a very bad injury. By yes, he did. Well, away. most of last yeah. season he was uh, he was out with uh, a cruciate ligament, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's nice to see those players coming Absolutely. back. Absolutely. John Salako, particularly. Well, I'm just going to talk to you about Salako because I imagine he will be on before the afternoon's out. The way we're going, and uh, he will make. Tremendous difference to the side. Came on in the Coca-Cola on Tuesday and turned it round completely when it Palace had gone a little bit quiet. Southgate knocks this one forward. Right chasing. That's a little bit of surface that Alan was talking about. As I said, once the rain goes, it doesn't help the play at all. If people think it does, it doesn't. The rain is actually better. Looking at those shirts again, it's amazing to me in this great age of commercialism. You've got two teams at the top of the first division of the NC League, and if you look at them, <laughs> neither side has got a, a shirt sponsor, or it seems. <laughs> Somebody's missing out somewhere. It's probably the reason why they got squad numbers. Barmer with the throw for Charlton. Played for Southgate. Coleman played in for White again. Tackled very heavily by McCleary. Picks himself up again as Chris Coleman turns that one in. Here's Simon Roger again. Robinson. Barmer gets it forward. Game in desperate need of a goal, really. Nelson. Pitcher. Minto on the far side. Nelson can't quite get to it, Humphrey can, and bangs it away, and in fact, Palace get a throw. That's a lovely ball for Minto, you know, Brian, there's just enough weight on it to get it round the back of the uh, full-back, and he does very, very well on that ball. Always impressed with him, the way he lays it in. Charlton reject there, saying to uh, John Humphrey, he only had 194 games for him, and in fact, I think he was their player of the year, in 88, 89 and 90, I mean, he was uh, now taking the throw. I mean, he was such Very a favourite here, a good player. Amazing. And that yeah. followed a career at Wolves and now a career here. Very, very good pro. There he goes in again. Well, this ball goes comfortably for Alan McCleary. That's the sort of ball that the lad Armstrong would have been on. Yes. And they would have enjoyed it. Whereas I think little Williams and White both wanted to feed. And consequently, they're, they're overplaying. That's what Alan... Smith, I'm sure, means. Minto. Young away. And Bobby Barry just couldn't keep it in play. And the throw goes Charlton's way with Scott Minto. Charlton now, as I said, we'll definitely try and up it a little bit. It's up to them to actually win the game at home. I'm sure they'd love to. Grant. This is Balmer. Minto. Balmer. Walsh on the far side. Chapel playing it in. Cut out by Gareth Southgate. Wide now for Williams. White's in the middle. 
Rogers coming up fast. Southgate's made a terrific break through the middle as well. And the header from White falls straight into the arms of Salmon. It was a bad mistake by Chapel, which was nearly punished. Trying to play in front of the uh, Palace defence. And it was a good header, a good save. Palmer. On he goes, he might have a dip here. Hits it straight at Big Eric Young. Richard Shaw gets it for Simon Roger. Southgate. Shaw to Barry. It's Williams making the run on the far side now, getting there just ahead of uh, Chapel. Plays it back for Humphrey, does very well indeed. Barry, now can he get across in? Can, but Barmer was there. Chapel makes the clearance. Not a very good one. Barry again, that's a nice bit of skill. A lovely bit of skill by Bobby Barry, and a cross from Humphrey. And Rogers right in there. And the goal kick given. Oh, that was lovely. That was a lovely bit of play. I like Barry keeping the ball up here. Resulted in two good crosses and two very good headers. That's what the game needs now. I think they've got to have a goal. Somebody's got to try and win the game, by This is the uh, cross coming in from John Humphrey and Rogers header. Slipping in steps Southgate. Chapel gets it away. Walsh. John Humphrey. Barry again with the cross. Driven in that time. As Palace have got a, a few crosses in just of late, and, and obviously it's beginning to tell and cause a bit of panic for Charlton. But it's a bit end-to-end -end now, Brian. It, it ended a bit stale, mate, and it's really livened up. Which is good for us. Humphrey's throw. Barry. Pardew. Young gets it clear. McCleary is header for Mill for it's a Millwall for Charlton. McCleary again. Uh, Pardew getting in and finds Balmer. Good turn there by Grant. Taken up here by Robinson. Balmer. Southgate. There wasn't any movement at all there. No movement at all for the lad Balmer. He only had Robinson and nobody else. So a throw for Charlton, Stuart Barmer, began his career at Celtic, takes it, finds John Robinson. There's his cross coming in. Oh. Well, that was Thorne on Nelson, and uh, howls for a penalty from behind that goal. Theo looked very sharply at me. I don't know what you thought, Theo. I thought they're both two experienced pros there, but I must say, I, I thought Oof. they was a little bit lucky there, Thorne, for me, to get away was. with that. A little bit fortunate. Gary Nelson is very good at body checking, to be fair, but uh, I thought Andy was a little bit lucky there. I'm sure he had a look at the referee as I did, and you. I sometimes think you're the referee. Salako soon to come on for Williams, we understand. Salmon gathering that one comfortably enough. Good throw, releasing Robinson. Nelson and Grant up ahead of him. Pitch has made a terrific dart through the middle for Charlton. Still with Robinson. And then in the end, Pardew had come up in support. And the pass simply wasn't uh, good enough he's, and Southgate got in. He's lost all his momentum, Brian. He must keep going forward. Once you play back, you've had it. Here comes McCleary. High towards Nelson. Thorne beating him comfortably and correctly in the air that time. In goes Roger. Robinson gets the better of him. Barmer with the cross. A deep one. Eric Young lets it go. And Bowery on the far side for Crystal Palace. Hit long. 
Minto's cushioned header. It'll fall possibly for White, no. Pitcher was in again very quickly indeed. A clever to stand out with the lad Robinson when he's taking the follow on. All he needs to do is keep his momentum going or he just throw the ball in. Once you play it back or square, it's all dead. Maybe there's a confidence factor. Yes, correct. They're having a fair scrap there. Hard with it. Who Thorne and Nelson. They certainly are. <laughs> Let me say, swap them over. <laughs> there oh. they go. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Nelson finishes on the floor that time. Now oh, Robinson. That came off uh, Chris Coleman, so it'll be a throw for Stuart Palmer to take for Charlton. Still nil-nil. Robinson. Gets the cross in, but that's an easy one for Martin. And Solarco now waiting to come on. It's quite amazing to think the Palace wants it. Solarco right and, and Mark Bright. Not bad, eh? Only left with John now. There's Coleman. I had to think, you know, they're doing so well. And yes. they sold uh, Jeff Thomas and Eddie McGoldrick in the summer as well. He's obviously injured the boy Williams. Uh, While he's going. And Solarco comes on. Well, this young man got an absolutely fantastic ovation when he came on on Tuesday night at Sellers Park and turned the whole game round. I mean, Palace at that point were looking fairly comfortable. They got a little quiet, but he absolutely revitalised the whole Palace side. It's lovely to see him play. Well, he's had something like two years or so with the most appalling knee problems. As I said at the start of the programme today, he's now signed a new contract, two and a half years, for Crystal Palace, and has seen a surgeon this week who's given him a complete OK. Robinson. <laughs> Crowd are loving it. On their feet. You should see them behind that stand. They're on their feet. <laughs> they didn't actually foul him. Strange as it may uh, seem. It was like David and Goliath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't actually foul him. I thought Robinson was going to use his weight, that might have been the turning point in it. But I tell you what, behind that uh, stand there, that, that was a pretty serious business up there. Cool. Minto. Oh, good jump there. Just got ahead of Thorne that time, did uh, Gary Nelson. Chapel battling with Solarco. This is Barry. Get it back to Humphrey. Crossed in quickly by him towards White. Again, safely held. Some good handling today by both keepers. Difficult conditions for them. Barry's header for Crystal Palace. Pitcher. Does like the tackle. He's got the strength to go with it too, hasn't he, yep. Darren Pitcher? Very determined. He's one of them that you need. Every team must have one. If they can. Grant. Pitcher. Walsh, nice little touch, but it was well read by Southgate. Chapel playing it wide towards Minto. There's Walsh down that line, and the ball fell for a moment quite nicely. Humphrey then, then the crowd are on their feet again, but again I would say the referee did right. That was a purely accidental collision, and uh, there's no way, there's no there was way, no way that was a foul. No way that John Humphreys could have caught him for a start. Exactly. He hurt himself. McCleary, Chapel gets it clear. Shaw. Sure. 
He's okay. starting to win a couple of headers now, Gary Nelson. He's won the last two or three. In goes Thorne. Beats Grant to it. Shaw. Steady influence in the uh, centre of midfield. Southgate knocking it forward too firmly. The legs look strong enough for uh, John Salakos, don't they? They look very well toned up anyway. Walsh plays it in. Thorne tries to get it away. Grant made it difficult for him, but it falls in the end for Barry. But long towards White. Well, you have to give Palace his two cents to defend his top marks. So they, have, they have done really well. And Chapel and McCleary have done well as well, but they've been very, very consistent, I think. And they're very strong at, the, at this level. Certainly got all the rousing passion of a, a local derby, but without Leeburn on one side and Armstrong on the other, just making that little bit of a cutting edge when it comes to goal. At the moment, at any rate, Coleman puts that behind, but I think it had already crossed. It's a goal kick. It's a shame, really, that the game has, has more or less been deprived, particularly of uh, of Lebron, I suppose, because I was so deserved uh, for, for what he did. But I'm a bit, bit sad that both of them aren't playing, to be fair. It would be very interesting. People don't think he uh, actually has his strength. He's actually been booked there. He's booked Derek Young there, the referee. Obviously for trying to pull him by. So that's another yellow card. Eric Gunn, Andy Thorne and uh, Alan McCleary, the three yellow cards so far today. A corner for Charlton. Floated high towards Chapel, gets the header in. Shaw gets it away. Up goes Walsh. In goes Pitcher with the header. Nelson. Robinson. Walsh again. Onto that left foot. Deflected slightly on the way, so providing Charlton with another corner. I think they could get one on the set piece, Brian. I said that in the first half. Well, Chapel's there. McCleary is at the near post. Nelson's in there. Grant's in there. Martin's in there, Chapel with a chance! I think that's the best chance. He's very good, Chapel, he's in the air from, from that end, and uh, Nigel wasn't very convincing there. Oh, good play here by uh, Simon Roger. Really skinned Stuart Palmer there now. Pitch has come across, but he's got the cross in as Roger. Clear the game by Charlton, it's Grant taking it for now. Nelson straight wide on the far side. Grant's going to take them all on and shoot from long range. Well, it was worth a go. That was excellent. They've had enough shots. I thought he was going to pick that up for one minute. Mm. Always something, if you, if you hustle the goalkeepers in those situations, you occasionally do get something you don't expect. Oh, we all stopped there. I thought it was offside. <laughs> The referees decided to let play go on. It was Palace's advantage, it was Charles, and it ended up Palace's. That was a strange one, Martin. And it's a Palace throw. It's building up now, Brian. It's getting exciting, and it's good. I think it was a little bit quiet just before half-time. Coleman. One. Just needs a goal for you. one end or the other. Ready to set it going. There's a foul on Colin Walsh. I think it might be a good time now for Charlton to try something different up front as well. Perhaps they, you know, they, they feel that. 
I think both of them have tried very, very hard, Grant, and Nelson particularly has come into the game more Brian now. He'll win those all day and all night. That is a lovely ball, isn't it? Charlton do play that ball, and I was wrong to play that one, but both him and Minto play that lovely ball around the corner. It's called a gully ball. I don't know who told me that. Humphrey away. Chapel. Minto might pick this up. Being pulled back there by Shaw. Well, if Young got a yellow card for what he did a moment ago, just wonder whether Shaw might suffer the same, no? It wasn't actually going on goal, that was the reason I think there. I mean, that was a definite pull in the foul. And a free kick for Charlton. Walsh behind this. And also Robinson. This one away, he's got time to do it. They have looked menacing from set plays, Charlton. They do work at it, I know, and uh, like every club, but they've got one or two players. Chapel, particularly, I think, really wants to get in there and do it. And that is the big significant factor in set plays. Who wants to get in there to get hurt or to score? Throw for Charlton. Going at Stuart Palmer. Palmer's cross. Humphrey, good header. Flag up. Still no goals. In what the Charlton program tells me is the first game televised live for a British audience from the Valley since, would you believe it, 1947. And I think uh, a game between uh, Charlton and Blackburn Rovers in a cup tie was televised here live. Before you said, or the Saint says it, I didn't do the commentary. <laughs> I was going to say I was only 10 year old, but that's uh, marvellous. That was the year they won the cup, of course, yes. Charlton, 47. And I saw Peter Croker, who was one of their players, at the uh, training ground yesterday. What a knowledgeable man you are. Yeah, well, they beat Burnley 1-0, didn't they? That's correct. The stuff is gone. Salako. Eric Young puts it away. It's a throw. Good match day program here at Charlton. I'll say Crystal Palace have one as well, and uh, we've done Millwall too. The quality of the match day programs these days, I must say, is absolutely first class. They're always a good read. In the old days, you just bought the program to get the teams. Just, yeah. Now, never everything's in it, which is good. And it is, uh, it is not probably quite so dear in this modern day that we live in. Dear enough. Gary Nelson. He battles away, Brian, doesn't he? He does battle away, Gary Nelson. He's done it for every club he's been with. It says he looking at his notes. South End, Swindon, Plymouth and Brighton. And a good player at all of those clubs and a good goal scorer too, Gary Nelson. Now 32. Probably very much a happy man when Carl Leeborn's with him. Yes. Who fights the other people. Oh, well played. Ah, well played, Scott Minto, but in the end, Bobby Barry was too good for him. Salako knocking that down, tries to get it, or at least uh, David White tries to get it back to Salako. Salako's throw for Shaw. Long range shot, go kick. He seems to be just sitting in there, Richard, for me. I, I really think he's a better player, in my opinion. He's a better player coming from behind, you know? Seems quite a, a full-back getting forward, he seems to really enjoy it. He's been, I suppose, him and Petra have just 
set the stall and both had a go. They're both full backs. They both done very well in there. Nelson. Bardew. Robinson. Oh, that's, that's the way he should have been playing. There's no shortage of confidence there. He just needs a little bit, a little bit, Brian, just to go by. I mean, that, that was terrific, you're right. And the other ones, he's tended to pass it too early. David White, beaten by Walsh. Walsh hitting it long, but Thorne doing a good job at the back for Palace. Chapel. Oh, that's a fairly meaningless ball. It's all right if you're holding a 1-0 lead with a minute to go. It's a lovely ball. I'm surprised, actually, the Palace have decided to play John Salako right up front. I would have preferred to see him come back on and play as a wide left player. <laughs> lovely bit of pace. He did have an yes. electric pace at one time. Roger jumping for this one. Southgate. He's got terrific acceleration, Gareth Southgate, I must say. Holman playing it in. Chapel didn't really get onto that one. Minto might get him out of a hole. Forwards have to work so hard now to get onside. Once the keeper clears the ball, defenders come up and uh, you really have to work hard. Once the old legs start to go, Brian, the distances get longer. There is free kick. hasn't quite matched the other two games we've seen between uh, Charlton and Palace so far this season, but it's nil-nil, there's still everything to play for. And Charlton about to make a substitution, they're about to bring on Paul Gorman in place of Gary Nelson. I bet everybody watching at home is amazed there's no goals in it. That's right. Played yes. in the game for Nelson, knocked on by him towards Grant. Grant turn his man. Is there a foul there? Grant shot. Down goes Martin. No free kicks, no fouls. I thought that was just a good challenge. I mean, they both ended up in the box, but it was just, for me, a good challenge. Here we are again, Theo. Yeah. Gary Nelson brought down. Obviously, that's why strikers cost money, because we've proved today that two strikers who aren't playing have been talked about as much as the game. Mento. Now the substitution. Gary Nelson, who's missed a couple of games, and uh, actually has battled on very, very well. He's had a, a back problem and a hamstring problem related to the back. Paul Gorman comes on. A striker they got from uh, Fisher. 25 years old. 
It's a little bit surprising to me, uh, Brian, because I felt that Gary in the last 10, 15 minutes of the game has actually got back into it again. Um, but something had to be done, and I suppose he, he probably feel uh, Alan and uh, Stevie that he's the one that might get the tiredest. Well, here's a free kick for Charlton. Scott Minto with it. Young's header. Plenty of distance on that one. Solarco beaten in the air by Chapel. I think the four central defenders have been outstanding, which is one of the reasons we haven't had many shots or many or any goals. Roger. Coleman outside. Him. And now White. Barry. Humphrey outside him if he wants him. And he does. So it's Humphrey's cross coming in for Crystal Palace. Up goes Salako. A glancing head on it. Can Roger get there first? I think it's just gone out. Well, I'm glad you've got to pick the man of the match, anyhow. They give me the easy jobs. Sides are cancelling each other out so much, particularly in that midfield area, aren't they? You saw the way that Shaw was on the pitcher so quickly there. Oh, here's Salako in a bit of space. White's waiting in the middle for him, a chance for Palace here, maybe. Right across that goal. Roger trying to turn it back and succeed in doing so. And Southgate's right in there, but there's a foul. Southgate brought it home, but the whistle had gone. Well, the lad Chapel fell asleep there. He Phil Chapel, he definitely fell asleep. Great run from John Salako, just out behind, but he really did fall asleep. It was a good ball knocked back as well. I thought they might have got some joy out of that. And Salako looks up. White's going in there, and that was pretty close. Very close. I think Palace have weathered the storm now, and I think they're sitting in and saying, we might win it now. Had White maybe got a little close to the goal line, they're a little too close, and in fact he was almost checking himself and trying to, to pull back, wasn't he, when uh, Sonarco played that ball too? Yes. Had he been another two or three yards out, he would have uh, run onto it much more comfortably. He got ahead of the ball. a bit that I'm really surprised at. He's attacking, he stops, plays the ball back to the left back, he was a little on than he had. I'd rather see the boy Roger have a go and try and do something else. Negative, I find that. Gorman jumping and winning. Grant taking it on. Robinson. Oh, he's taking it on this time, but Coleman just he's stayed his stay. ground and uh, turned it away for the throw. He's been very steady, Coleman. Done very well. Palmer. Robinson. Came off Andy Thorne again. Knocked back once more by Alan Cardew and behind for the court. That was lovely. Will they get one off the uh, set piece? Will take it. Will they get one off the set piece? Says Theo. Let's see. They've got McCleary again at the near post. Grant's in there. Chapel's up from the back, of course. Pardew's in there too. 
fisted away. Walsh playing it wide again for Robinson. He's got a chance to play it in quickly, which he does. And here's Southgate. Long clearance. Minto gets it back. That was nice when Robinson went by there, wasn't it? Lovely. I think Dean Gordon looks as though he's doing some uh, warming up. Doing some warming up for Crystal Palace. I understand it's, uh, it's Simon Roger who's coming off, which might mean a possibility of slipping Solarco out to the left-hand side. Uh, or possibly Tom Big Coleman up the front. Well, yes, Dean yeah. Gordon plays left back. But it certainly can be seen as a positive move, even though it's a defender coming on. And, uh, and also, uh, Charlton are bringing on Sean Newton, and John Robinson's going off for them. I asked you before the game why he, uh, Newton wasn't playing, and uh, I was quite surprised when he said what he said. I think, it's a very, yeah, I think it was just that they, they, they felt he's a young lad who's played an awful lot of football, they just wanted to give him a rest. He's only got seven minutes to work now. Yep. He shouldn't get tired in that time, boy. Pitcher. Young. Cleary. Humphrey. Up to Salako. Southgate. He's Gordon away on his left hand side. Oh, he's done well here. And in the end, it was McCleary who put his header clear. Newton who hits it straight at Southgate. No, it wasn't out of play. No, it is. And a throw for Charlton. Obviously, the two substitutes might just bring that little bit of added pressure to either. To either side. The number one bomber throwing the ball in. Don't get me going about those shirts again, Theo. Talking to Graham Soonis in the week, he said, I've seen a 37. <laughs> I've seen a 35, I think, playing for Chelsea. I think the most we've got here is a 23. <laughs> I think every now when I played, I had 48 pros. In the real tour. Not helped by a teammate, Eric Young. A space for Walsh if he likes to try that left foot. Instead of that, he tried to find Alan Pardew with it. Chapel with this one. Up goes Thorn. Kitcher playing it wide. Minto playing it in. Touched on by Walsh. Knocked away again by Gareth Southgate. Charlton. Four minutes to go. And it'll be a 
free kick to Charlton, a two a Crystal Palace. I think both sides now have decided that it is going to be a draw and nobody's going to make a mistake. Runs in on this one. Humphrey might charge it back in again. Shaw's in there too. Coleman with a shot. Finishes as a goal kick. So tell us who the man of the match is. Well, to be honest, Brian, it's, it, I fancy both of the uh, central defenders, and both teams have been outstanding. That's probably why I've gone for Scott Minto, because he's proved he's got class. His distribution has been fantastic, and I've, I've been impressed with the young man all, all, all day. He's done very, very well indeed. That's the reason I'm going for him. So, uh, the player who plays left back, wears number 11 shirt for Charlton Athletic, is the man of the match chosen by Theo Foley. Time, Crystal Palace with a free kick. Bobby Barry will take it. Walsh flicks it away with the left foot. Looks as though there was a degree of handball there by Gorman. There's a foul there by Salako. And a free kick to Charlton Athletic. And the match on the ball at the moment, Scott Minto heading it long towards Kim Grant. Scott Minto will be throw. Foul by him on Shaw. He couldn't have been far from your man of the match, the young man there, Darren yeah. Pitcher. I've always been a Darren Pitcher fan. I think he's very, very good. But I think that when it comes to, to real class, I think Minto has got that lovely bit of class. Yeah, he, he does very well. As I said, every team needs a, a pitcher, and uh, he gets in there and he does the job. And him and Thorne Richard then Shaw. with the free kick. Stays no more. Palace go top. Goal score, they go just inching ahead of Tranmere Rovers. Victory for either side puts them clear at the top, but time is running up pretty fast for that, as you can see. We're in the last minute of the game. Free kick to Paris. I suppose at the end of the day, Brian Charlton will be pleased that they put so much effort after the night. Palace coming here and getting a draw, they must be pleased as well. And without their big centre forward, Armstrong. Could they get one here? Well, can they get one here? Here's the free kick coming in. Yes, yeah. Solarco going for it, but beaten by Cardew. And this is the young substitute, Sean Newton. Charlton can spring to the other end and uh, spring to the top of the table, but sadly for them, not with a pass like that. And Barber infuriated by that pass from Newton. And that's actually come about four times today, that same point. Barber, if he runs past him, he actually gets the ball at the feet. He supports him from the back, the momentum of the play has stopped. Definitely one for the coaching book, that one. Barber with the throw for Charlton. The last seconds of the game now. Kim Grant. Trying to get the better of Coleman. And I think Thorne will get there first, and he does. Chapel. Minto. Walsh. Now that's the sort of one I mean. He's, he's actually ran past Walsh and got himself in there, Scott Minto. And they've got a corner. Could they score from here? Well, Colin Walsh will take it. Canny old deliverer of corners, he is. Hardy's in there, Chapel's in there, Newton's in there. McClear is at the near post again. Chapel's header. 
Southgate will hammer this one clear. That's a real 20 to 5 ball, that. He's, he's won most of the headers in there, though, Chaplin. To be fair, they haven't all been where he had gone, where he's wanted him to go, but he's won them, and Eric Young is very strong against him. Some fun of games there between. Uh, he doesn't want to dance Four. everybody yes. going when he gets there. Foreman and uh, Humphrey having a little shindig there. The referee had to stop that fairly quickly. Come to bat. Grant is on his way now. And so was Coleman. Excellent defending there by the big Welshman. But will he go for the corner? It has. So Palace are not out of the wood yet. Yes, they are. The final whistle's gone. You don't need to have time on for corners to be taken, only for penalties. And uh, Martin Bodenham, the referee from Cornwall, blows the whistle. The robustious local derby here between Charlton and Crystal Palace comes to an end. It's nil-nil. Theo, your thoughts overall? Well, I, as I said, I, I do feel that Charlton will be very, very pleased that we come back from the defeat. Palace a little bit disappointed they haven't built on the great win. So all in all, I suppose at the end of the day, it's been hard fought and, it, and it's been what we all know to, uh, to be, a local derby with that sort of edge and effort all the time. Both centre forwards, I think, were a big loss, definitely to both teams, Leibon and Armstrong. Right, let's just have a quick word then with the Crystal Palace manager, Alan Smith. Alan, before you pop off to Portugal for, for a little break, it's a goalless or it takes you top of the division, though. How do you react to that? Well, I was disappointed today, Jim. We didn't play well. I think we've been very lucky to get away with a result. You know, I'm glad we didn't lose because it would have been a long day, four days in Portugal. I lost a couple of my golf partners tomorrow. But we can go away top of the league, but not happy with the performance at all. Very poor. What particular aspects of the Palace performance uh, disappointed you, Alan? Well, I thought in midfield they, they were better than us. They were first to the ball. Our front players didn't really perform today. And our wide players didn't get crosses in. Right. I think our back four can come out with a bit of credit. Nigel Martin didn't have a lot to do. But all credit to Charlton. They were the big fellow up front today. And get, I thought they played well. Getting this fellow, John Solarco, back into the frame before we speak to John, that must be a big bonus for you. Well, it's a big bonus. a very exciting player. He's got half an hour under his belt today. And, you know, once he uh, gets his feet on the ground and does the simple things, you know, he, he could take us a long way. Thanks, Alan. Enjoy your break, won't you? John, a quick word with you. First of all, what's the toughest things for you about uh, getting back into the game after all that time out? To be honest, I thought it'd be the pace, but I seem to adjust it to that, but it's just, this, it's so fast. I've done, I did my groin, I slightly tore it when I first came on the other night, and I've been sort of nursing it, and he's come on for half an hour there, and the groin's sort of gone after 10 minutes. So we're going to get knocks, aches and knocks up when he first come back, that's the problem. I got hamstring last time, so hopefully I can get over this fairly quickly. And, get back in the team. A lot of people will be asking John how long will it be before we see the genuine John Solarco again? Well it's very difficult, there's a lot of speculation and talk about players who have long injuries, I'm just happy to be playing and hopefully I could be, hopefully I want to be back to my best in at least a month or six weeks but really you have to hopefully, fingers crossed, stay away from the aches and knocks. John great to see you back, have a good break, love to see Palace top of the league.